Now I know this is a different kind of video from what I regularly do, but um, I feel like it's something that at this point I, I could do. I feel like it's something that at this point in my computing career, something I should discuss, something that needs to be said. Now, what is a cerebration or cerebration, I believe it's called? It's kind of... I guess if I were to describe it, it's kind of a review, kind of a look back, and so uh, kind of a pondering past events. And so I will. I figured I could do that with Linux because, as you know, I was uh, very into Linux for quite a while. Um, so where to start? Um, I have my notes off over to the side here. Um, free as in freedom. Um, now you look at that and you think, okay, this is this is good. It's a free product. That means these operating systems are free, free of charge. Everything about them, 100% free. You will never have to pay for it, ever. Now that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And in theory, that is very good. I loved it. I loved that side of it. That was, in fact, one of my main selling points when my friends and family would ask about it. Why do you enjoy this? I said, well, it's 100% free. Now, let's talk about why that's good. If you are on a budget and you were somebody like me who doesn't have a lot of money and you need something to get your computer up and running, say you need to, say you're a Facebook mom. And all you do on your computer is go onto Facebook and look at funny pictures of cats and dogs and post them to your friends. And you play your little games on Facebook and you email the kids and all that. Linux is great for you. If Windows has failed or if you're somebody who at this point um, is still using Windows XP because that's no longer supported and you want something that is uh, still supported um, Linux might be a good option for somebody like that. If you're just checking emails, setting up alerts like a calendar, and things of that nature, um, Linux will be great for you. But on the other hand, um, if we look at this from a more, I guess, a critical perspective, everything being free means nobody ever pays to fund any of this, except for the people who made it. And a lot of times, if you look into these distributions, with the thousands upon thousands of them, in fact, I'm going to you know, slap that on my notes, the uh, thousands of distros, because that's another thing that he's going over. Uh, sorry, here I'm typing. Um, thousands of distros. There, now it's in my notes. Now I'll know to go over it later. So... Um, yeah, with all the thousands and thousands of these things, um, most of them, if you look back into them, they're funded by people like myself, people who are um, on a budget or school, school-age people who thought, you know what, I'm pretty savvy with technology. Let's see if I can make a functioning operating system. So they're like, college kids, or sometimes small corporations. Some of them, such as Canonical with Ubuntu, or uh, Red Hat with Fedora, they're pretty big companies. They uh, they fund their projects very well, and uh, I give them respect for that. They found a product that they thought was worth their time, and they funded it, and it's good. But, on the other hand, a lot of these things, as I said, are very, very cheaply produced, because it's fairly simple to produce them if you know what you're doing. Now some people don't know what they're doing such as myself so if I attempted to make one it would not come out very well um, and that's the problem is a lot of these are are created by people like myself who um, who don't have a whole lot of money to fund these kind of projects and so we put the free time in that we can and hope that it works. We don't have a lot of people to beta test these things and run different programs and products through uh, our our distribution that we or I have made. And so there's generally lots of bugs involved. 
And uh, the freeze and freedom bit also carries into the software, which is something that I will go into more in depth in a little bit. Um, I guess I already wrote down the distro thing, the many variants, uh, the many variants of Linux. Now, uh, Linux is very unique in terms of computing because right now I'm using Mac, which is Mac. It's you think Mac and you think there's going to be the dock on the bottom, the little bar at the top that tells you what what you're currently clicked on, what, what window you're currently operating, and it has a couple little taskbar icons, but mainly you're using this bar at the bottom. And that is what Mac is. Or you think of Windows and you think of the start bar in the bottom left corner. And that's kind of your first thought. Or Windows 10, or well, I guess Windows 8, you think of the Metro interface. But you think of Mac and Windows and you have a definite idea of what this desktop is going to look like. In um, Actually, in fact, I'm going to break this off into just the desktop environment. I'll go over the different distributions later, but if you download a Linux distribution, you have to pick between one of, I believe it's five popular, or at least semi-popular, desktop environments. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's good, I get some choice. Uh, in that respect, it is. It's great. If you're somebody who likes a lot of variation and you want to very much customize your desktop experience, your computing experience to yourself, then that's great. But then again, all these variants, bringing back to the, uh, the point I was making earlier about the Facebook mom, it may be overwhelming for somebody such as Facebook mom to try to download this to fix her computer and she sees that there's five different five different desktop environments like a hundred million different distributions which one does she pick now see that's what that's where it comes down to preference because you have KDE desktop which is I don't know what that means exactly but you get the option to make all of these little plasmids and desktop tweaks so you can have folders always open on your desktop you can have little widgets and tools and little things on your desktop and that's how it runs that's what it's meant for or you have the ubuntu unity desktop which is sort of like mac if you took the taskbar and you put it on the left side of the screen that's what everything runs through so in that regard i think Unity isn't that bad. Now, a lot of people liked Unity 2, I think, it, or it wasn't a Unity, it was before, it was when they used GNOME 2, which is another one. Uh, that was a bit more reminiscent of a Windows, except there were two bars, your start bar and all of your accessories and your options menu was at the top, kind of like on Mac, when you look at the Apple icon, it's in the top left. That was where everything happened, and the bottom bar was where it showed, like on Windows, all of your open windows. All of your open tasks showed up on your taskbar at the bottom. And then they also made GNOME 3, which was a completely blank desktop until you press the start button, and then it opens everything. And then it opens up your activity center, which shows all of your open windows. There's a bar on the side that shows all of your programs, and there's a menu button that opens up into all of your other programs and yada 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 if you look into it if you want to know what any of these are um, I will um, I'll hopefully hopefully remember to edit in links to where you can see all of these or you can just google them if you want um, hopefully I'll be writing them up on the screen for you if I remember to do so but this can be something that's very complicated and uh, difficult to get into because of all the variants, not necessarily because the desktop itself is hard, but because if you're not well informed, you will not know which one to pick, which desktop environment is good for you, and then on top of the desktop environment, which branch of that desktop environment do you want? Uh, I'll go more in depth in that later.
um, Linux is uh, is seen as complex. Now, a lot of people look at Linux or they hear Linux and they think of the people who are all in the command terminal and it's all just codes and dash sudo root git and all these other command line codes and consoles are open all the time you're flying around with all these different things and in some aspects that's true when you get it started on some distributions that is exactly what you're getting is just a code monkey's dream but as I've found when I was digging through and you can go through and look at my Linux reviews uh, my Linux reviews playlist uh, I have found that over time they've been trying to simplify Linux to bring it kind of to the masses make every, make it something that anyone and everyone could pick up and use and uh, I think they've made great strides to be completely honest in trying to simplify such a quote unquote complex operating system into something that your grandma could use without a whole bunch of difficulty heck they even make skins for one of the more popular linux distributions linux mint that makes it look almost identical to windows xp which i used for quite a long time because i was a fan of windows xp i thought it ran great um so when I had Linux Mint, I made it look exactly like Windows XP. Because for me, I was like, Windows XP was great. So I made it look exactly like Windows XP. And then your grandma, who was using Windows XP, you could just give her that, install Solitaire and her web browser and all that kind of stuff, and off she goes. Not a worry in the world for her. So I think the uh, complexity of Linux is something that uh, you really just... Do, do a little bit of research, do a couple Google searches, watch a couple YouTube videos, and find one that's simple enough for you, but complex enough that you think you're going to be learning something. Now that's something I didn't write in my notes. Uh, how much I learned when I used Linux. Uh, you learn a lot of command line stuff, yes, because you have to learn all of the codes to download new software and stuff that's not in your uh, software repositories. Uh, but um, I learned a lot about different computer terminology, I guess I would put it. Um, I learned a lot more about the uh, command terminal and the console and learning about how that kind of is configured or how that helps you configure the computer better. I learned about uh, installing and removing packages on not just the scale of I'm downloading a game or I'm downloading like a new web browser or an extension, but to the point where if I installed something wrong, my entire computer went bad because I was installing entire operating systems on top of operating systems so I could have the functionality of one but have the, uh, have the interface of another. And uh, really, it's something that I, I suggest you download like VirtualBox and Explore because to be quite honest, it's made some pretty good stuff, like the uh, Chrome OS for the Chromebooks is Linux, or I know a lot of server computers run Linux because it runs for years and years on end without ever needing rebooted. Um, so I think that is one strong point of Linux, is uh, especially if you're in the tech scene, I think it's something that you should really look into. Even, again, if you just download it in VirtualBox, play with it for an evening, you might learn a thing or two. It's it's really cool, some of the stuff that you take for granted on these other computers, because it's configured for you that you really get to dig into with Linux. Um, and I think, that, I think that if you're somebody who's willing to put the time into it, I think Linux can do, any, it can do anything a Windows or a Mac can do, if not more, if you do it properly, if you go into it with the proper knowledge and uh, are willing to be kind of patient with it at first if I'm being quite honest. Um, now another thing that kind of I think drives people away from Linux as an operating system overall is uh, one as I was going over the fact that somebody says Linux and they say oh which one? Uh, that's something that uh, I often 
here when I when I told people that I used Linux. They said, "Well, which one are you using?" Um, and that's that was part of the many variants thing. Was are you using Ubuntu? Are you using Fedora? Because they all work differently, and they're all they were all built for different things. Um, that's one thing I think they they could uh, work on maybe is putting everything, all of this together, all of the uh, all the Linux distributions and all of the Linux uh, environments, I guess, and maybe trying to put all of this effort together into one kind of grand operating system because when you tell someone you're using Linux, the first question in their mind is which distribution? Because that will determine immediately for them what kind of computer user you are. Even if you say I'm using Linux to the untrained to somebody who doesn't know enough about it to ask which one, who doesn't know that there's multiples, they're going to think you're a geek, which is, in my opinion, just fine. Let people think what they want. But, um, no, I feel like Linux should maybe focus more on one or maybe, like, dumb it down to even just, even just the five, because right now they have thousands upon thousands. It's really confusing. But anyway, I'll get more into that later. Um, one thing that I think drives people away from Linux, what I was trying, the point I was trying to make, we're circling back here, was uh, Linux, Linux is a bit more of a friendly name, but a lot of people say, uh, and you can quote me on this, I've seen it in the comments of, of some of my videos, I've seen it all over forums and all over the IRC chat and all that other stuff that you use when you're using Linux to like learn about it, and that sort of stuff, is... Uh, a lot of people say, oh, we'll just call it Linux, but then other people say call it GNU Linux or GNU, GNU Linux, which is technically the term for it because GNU is like the platform that Linux is built upon, like the base base coding of it. And uh, one thing that I think drives people away from this is the fact that uh, that's not a very friendly name. When you hear Windows, you think, okay, it's Windows. That's all there is to it. It's Windows. Or you hear Mac, and you're like, okay, it's a pretty simple, easy to chew name. But then you hear GNU Linux or GNU Linux, and you're like, well, what the hell is that? And I think, uh, just kind of as a short point here, that's something that kind of drives it away. If they like, if you look at the distributions themselves, you hear Fedora, and you're like, okay, pretty easy to swallow. Or Ubuntu, that's pretty easy. Or Mint, and you're like, that's that's all all right or even some of the weirder ones like uh albatross or antergos or uh even arch if you just said that that's a lot easier to swallow than gnu linux and so i feel like maybe linux should uh maybe the community because this whole thing's community driven uh, which i think is good that's part of why it's all free and stuff is the community doesn't want to pay for crap um uh, if they would fund it a little bit uh, which you'd be surprised how much some of this crap gets funded like uh, Fedora which is a uh, free version of it's a free version of Red Hat Linux pretty much which kind of takes the interface of Windows 98 but Fedora is like the experimental version of that uh, which kind of at this point has gone off in its own direction but that's because people funded it and said we want this to be a GNOME 3 desktop and they they put in thousands and thousands of dollars to help develop this and uh, I thought that was kind of cool but like they should this community as a whole should maybe try to simplify the name that they call it maybe make one term for I mean that's kind of what Linux is but like instead of just calling it Linux maybe just say I use Ubuntu or I use Fedora it might make it a little easier for uh, some of the less educated to uh, swallow, I guess, would be the term. Um, now let's get over to the software side of things. I was talking about that about 10, minutes, 10 or 20 minutes ago, I guess now. Um, all the software in the Linux, or at least, at least the lion's share of it, is open source. Now, uh, open source is, if you're not... If you're not aware, most of you probably are, and you think this is stupid, but open source is completely free. 
no one paid for it. It's like a community made. It's like made by a group of friends that just wanted to do it because they thought it was fun. And they're willing to update it. Or not even always update it. But they made it just because they thought it was cool. And so they're giving it to you for free. Just to share with it as you want. There's no copyright law. There's no... Uh, there's no licensing involved. You just kind of get it. It's just, it's yours. You can burn it to a disc and sell it. You can give it to your friends. You can do whatever the hell you want with it and nobody cares. Um, so from somebody who downloads a lot of stuff like I do, or at least as I used to, uh, it was really nice that everything, or at least most of the uh, software centers on all of the Linux distributions that I dinked around with most of it was free and uh, you didn't have to tie a credit card to it or anything in order to get the free stuff like you do with say iTunes or something where you have to make an iTunes account and link a debit card to it it was just free that was it that was all there was to it and uh, I thought that was pretty cool Um, but that also means kind of like what I was saying with the whole free is in freedom thing is uh, since people aren't paying for it no unless I mean some of the projects are, of course, because some people just donate because they want to, because they're generous people and they believe that the project is a good, solid project. So they donate to help keep it alive and help help upgrade it. But a lot of the time, sorry, I heard a thump. Um, a lot of times people will see, oh, it's free, and they'll download it and expect it to be as good as a paid-for program, as good as... Like if you got GIMP, which I use GIMP. I love GIMP. Uh, GIMP is something that people donate to, but you look at it on the website and it says it's free and it's an open source program and it's like one of the staples of the open source programs. Uh, But you download it and a lot of people think it's going to be just as good as Photoshop, as Adobe Photoshop, the what, $100 program, $200? I think it's more than that, but you know, like Adobe Premiere. It's not going to be as good as Adobe. It can, I mean, not even taking anything away from GIMP. I love GIMP. GIMP is a wonderful program and I use it almost daily. But I feel like because it's free and because it's open source and only community funded, not funded by a big company like Adobe, they're never going to quite have the same innovations that Adobe does because they just don't have the funding for it. And uh, I feel like a lot of the software available for Linux and its distributions fall into that category of it's a great program in theory, but due to lack of funding, it's not it's never going to go anywhere too special. And I think that's one of its downfalls. But then again, if you're if you're Facebook mom, you might want Solitaire. You might want to get Tuxcart, which is the open source version of like Super Mario Kart. You would just want a couple games for the kids to play. It's great. Like, who cares if it's if you never get to update it? Like, that's fine. So it's a good and a bad. It just kind of depends on where you're coming from. Um, now let's talk about compatibility. Now this is where. Linux gets, that's where Linux kind of gives you the finger, to be quite honest. Uh, if you tried to open a Word document in Linux, um, it would probably work. Now you're thinking, okay, that's fine. Uh, because most Linux distributions come with, by default, uh, a program that I use even on my Mac called uh, LibreOffice or, and or OpenOffice which is kind of the same thing. LibreOffice is like a branch of it, but uh, it's just a free, like a, it's an office suite is what it is. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just a very plain, basic, like 2000, it's like 97 office word. It gets the job done. It's nothing super fancy, but in a pinch, it gets the job done. Um, and that's great, and it gets really good compatibility with Windows, with most Windows documents. And I have to say, I'm impressed. 
Color Me Impressed. That that is a great program, and GIMP will make almost any picture under the sun. It's pretty compatible, and like the music players will play any and all MP3s. In fact, the uh, one of the Linux. Uh, well, I found it through Linux. It doesn't mean it's from Linux, but that's where I found it. VLC Media Player. That thing plays way more media types than uh, than Windows Media Player ever even dreamed of, and I gotta give it credit for that. It's an open source program, but they really went for like they really looked into what is every single type of media that somebody might be trying to play. You can play music through it. You can play all your videos through it. Doesn't matter what kind of weird encoding it is. You can play it. But then we get to pretty much any other thing ever that you would ever do on a computer they have they have firefox thunderbird mail or whatever it's called yeah mozilla thunderbird for mail you can hook up a heck of a lot of mail clients to it you can hook up google you can hook up yahoo you can hook up live so i guess yeah for like very basic stuff again facebook mom it's not gonna have a problem with this but if you're somebody like me who plays a lot of games and does a lot of like kind of cross-platform kind of stuff, you're gonna have a problem. If you try to boot up Diablo 2 in in Linux, there's no way. It's never gonna work. I mean, granted, there's a program called Wine that you can use on Mac and Linux, and it's like a compatibility layer thing that's supposed to make a lot of the older Windows programs run on Mac and Linux and a lot of it it does like if you're trying to run something simple like a media player then it does but if you do any kind of game or any kind of like bigger more complex sort of file like that there's no way in hell it's gonna work um or at least not that I have found to do properly on the machines that I have been given to run Linux upon and uh yeah, so I think that's that's something they could work on is compatibility. Just overall, and I mean wine is a good step. It's a good step for them. It it gets a lot of the very necessary com- compatibility if you were using this in like an office setting. You could use wine and a combination of wine and the tools that Linux gives you by default. And you could probably get your office up and running perfectly fine. But if you do anything, if you're somebody, again, like me, who does gaming and YouTube and all that kind of stuff, it's going to be a lot more difficult. You're not going to be able to run Guild Wars 2 and Arma. You can run Dota on it now, which is a big step forward. But you're going to have graphic bugs. And your NVIDIA driver is not going to work unless you follow these certain steps and it's a it's a complicated process if you want to learn more about it i suggest googling it because there's a lot about it that i don't know to be quite honest i just know that there were a lot of times i tried to get stuff to run and it would say this program is not freaking compatible and there would be all these pop-up menus saying it's not compatible with this it's not compatible you're missing this plugin you're missing this and that and all this kind of junk whatever that's not the point the point is it's not compatible with everything so uh, use it at your own risk, I guess, if compatibility is a very big issue for you, I would maybe stay away. Um, but I, I, again, would say try it in a virtual box because it has created some great things and I feel like it's good at what it does. If you're like a developer for games and stuff and you need, you do a lot of coding and all that, all that good stuff, Linux is wonderful. But for a lot of other things, it's not. Again, Facebook mom, going to do great. Got to move on here before I get stuck in a rant. Um, The community. Okay. Now, this this is a fun one. The community is, it's your lifeline when you first get thrown into the ocean of Linux. They are, they're your buoy. They're your life support. They're the reason that you understand any of this GNU terminally pseudo apt bullshit. If you couldn't Google and find a website 
where some guy named Penguin Lover XX42 told you how the hell the terminal worked and what the code was to update all your apps, you would have no idea. But at the same time, you try to find a good article on, like when you're first starting out, on which Linux distribution you should use. You're going to find like 30,000 different ones explaining why this why X distribution is better than Y distribution and why Canonical sucks and why Fedora can't be used for this or why Ubuntu is bad at that. And the community just... Oh man, the community just cannot make up its freaking mind about what it wants to tell you half the time. A lot of times if you ask a very very direct question like what is the terminal code for updating my apps on Ubuntu then you'll hop on the Ubuntu forums and about a week later somebody will respond and say well it's sudo apt get and then type in your application or sudo apt get update on Ubuntu that's how you do it and pretty straightforward but if you ask a more general question that has more opinion behind it. Such as, I'm new to Linux. Which Linux distribution should you use? Or should I use, I suppose? They're going to ask a thousand different questions to help you determine this. And at times this is wonderful. But sometimes when you're, again, Facebook mom or somebody like me who wants a lot of different things out of the computer kind of all at the same time, it's going to be just confusing and it's going to upset you and you're going to run away. Pretty much, long story short, you're going to run away because they're going to say, okay, well, what are you using your computer for? You say gaming. Immediately, everyone's going to say Ubuntu or Linux Mint, but then half of your games aren't going to work and you're going to be upset and you're going to, you're going to quit like I did. Or you're going to say, well, I'm... I'm just looking to get on the internet and check some emails. They're going to give you such a long list of possible distributions that can do that. You're going to run away. Or you're going to install one without knowing what it is. And it's going to be super complicated and weird because it was made by some kid in his basement in South Dakota on an afternoon that he had nothing to do. He didn't finish any of it. And it barely works. So the community sometimes doesn't point you in the best direction. And to the Linux community as a whole, I don't mean anything bad by this. Like, you have helped, the Linux community has helped me through so much crap. So much crap. So much, so many things that I don't understand. The Linux community, a lot of the time is there for you. Like, if you say, I'm using Ubuntu, but I want the interface of let's say KDE, they're going to give you a link and they're going to give you a tutorial on exactly how the hell you can run a KDE environment over top of Ubuntu without issue. But then again, they'll argue and argue over why you should have just installed this instead because it's better for this guy or stuff like that. Overall, I think the community is, has a big heart I think they all mean well, but they just need to, um, you just need to make sure that when you look for help, you look on a forum that is for the operating system of your choice on which distribution you chose, because otherwise you're going to get 500,000 different opinions on what you can and can't do or what you should and shouldn't install and all these other things. And people will argue over why this distribution is better. And that's not why you're there. So Long story short, if you're going to ask the community, which I suggest you do, just pick the proper form to do it on. Now, when you install a Linux distribution, sorry, my tongue's tied here. Um, when you install it, as you would expect, you get some software. Is this software any good? If you compare it to Windows and Mac, is it any good? Now, my Mac had a few issues when I installed it, and it's nobody's fault, but it didn't come with 
the office suite. It didn't come by default with GarageBand and iMovie, which I thought was kind of sad. I thought it was a shame because it's supposed to. When you buy a Mac, it comes with it just by default. And I feel like it should have when I rebooted it, when I re reset it from when it was my brother's. And uh, that's nobody's fault, but it happens from time to time. And uh, Linux gives you, by default, if I were to name off a couple programs, GIMP. It gives you Firefox. It gives you LibreOffice. It gives you VLC. All four of those programs I'm using right now on this Mac. At, like, they're running in the background as we speak. And they're wonderful programs. So I guess to cut something that could be really long, really short... It just in terms of time because this is already over 30 minutes the base software that a Linux distribution comes with again varies on the distribution but I would say overall the uh, the developers of the distributions are pretty good at looking at what their distribution is designed to do and it gives you the base software to get you started now of course you can go online and look for if you're doing graphic design, everyone's going to point you to GIMP. Or if you're saying, well, I need a media player, everyone's going to give you VLC. And, uh, yeah, it may not come pre-installed, but it's pretty easy to find it. But I think that depending upon what the distribution was designed to do, uh, I think for what it tells you it's designed to do, it gives you a pretty good starting point. And I have to give it that. It does a good job at getting you started on the task at hand. For menial, everyday tasks, it's going to do great. Now, if you were to install one of these Linux operating systems, how, how would one go about that? Well, you download it to a disk or a USB drive. You plug it into your computer or throw it in your disk tray. And, uh, and you get to work. You, uh, you get started installing it now what does that look like um generally if you're going for one of the i guess one of the higher tier i guess you would call it one of the uh, more widely used popular distributions the install is going to be a very simple point and click menu that asks you to put in the region of your computer it's going to ask if you want to install your updates while you install the operating system it's going to ask if you want to, it's going to ask what you want to set your username to, and what you want to set your password to, and it'll have a nifty little slideshow showing you where you can go for support and uh, some of the new features in the new updated version of this distribution. And I think that's great. It was, it's really quite easy overall to install a Linux distribution compared to in the past. They've done a great job. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. Anyone could do it if they can. As long as you can read the computer screen, you can do it. But if you get into the more obscure ones, some of the more obscure operating systems out there, and believe me, if you look into Linux operating systems, you will be surprised at how obscure and sometimes oddly specific they can become. Like, I remember one time I was looking at um, Ubuntu spins because I was a big fan of Ubuntu. And uh, I know a lot of people aren't, and a lot of people are going to give me crap in the comments. I can hear you typing it already. Um, but I personally quite enjoyed it. Even Ubuntu itself. A lot of people didn't like the Unity interface. I thought it was fine. But, um, you know, I was looking around at Ubuntu distros and, like, different spins on it because I, I was bored of standard Ubuntu. And I found Ubuntu Christian Edition, which is Ubuntu, but it comes pre-installed with a Bible and some other, like, Bible study type of programs. So it gets oddly specific sometimes. But I'm getting off track here. When you install some of the weirder distributions out there, a lot of times they won't even have an installer. It will give you a terminal 
just blank box and it will expect you to know every single command to install every single thing that you want on that computer that's really complicated if you don't know what you're doing that's really complicated um, but I think overall just to cut it short again um, so I don't go into a rant um, I think overall the popular distributions have done a very good job at making installing quite easy and a lot of the smaller distributions are taking the install managers from OpenSUSE or OpenSUSE or whatever it's called or Ubuntu or Fedora and they make it quite easy but then some of them I think just kind of need to make the transition over and in some regards I almost think some of the Linux distributions were easier to install than Windows believe it or not uh, and software is pretty much the same you pretty much open up your software manager just like you'd open the App Store on an iPhone or the Google Play Store on an Android you would type in what you're looking for pretty much find it I mean for the most part you'll find a product and you click the install button you put in your password and install it and it's a pretty it's a pretty pretty good uh, pretty good way to do it I think like I think the uh, installation of software has been pretty pretty main has been pretty streamlined I guess at this point and I think that uh, even though Linux is such a unique community I think they've done a good job at trying to keep the installation of software a pretty simple thing now sometimes you have to go into the command terminal which kinda sucks to uh, you have to go into the terminal to install your software and that's pretty much a quick Google search to figure out what the command is and then if you do it enough if you're someone like me who hopped to distributions you'll install it enough that you'll have you'll know it by heart but a lot of times if it's a big enough program it's gonna be in your software manager and you click a couple buttons put in your password and there you go now help and support um, I kinda went over that with uh, community where you go you go to the website of the distribution that you are using and you ask your question give them about a week or so and more than likely they'll give you a pretty good answer an answer that you'll probably be happy with and you'll move on with your day now sometimes the help and support you get is those negative people I was talking about that'll just argue and argue about this and that and the other but again, overall, I think the help and support from the community, I really should have put this all into one single bullet. I don't know why I separated it. But the help and support from the community is very good, I would have to say, overall for something that's so, for, for a system that's so varied, I guess, that has so many different flavors and spins and distributions and environments the help and support that you get from the community is very good it's they're pretty good about answering any and all questions you might have so don't be afraid to hop on Google or look up a YouTube video on how to do something people have trouble with this it's understandable and people are more than willing to help you now I was saying earlier if you're a gamer that Linux isn't always great for you if you look at my channel uh, you might think, well, you did quite a lot of gaming for somebody who says that gaming on Linux is stupid and bad. That is true. If you're willing to break away from some from some games, such as the Call of Duty franchise, then your gaming is not necessarily going to suffer. In fact, a couple of my favorite games of all time uh, like Nuclear Throne or um, Papers Please which I haven't played in freaking forever that brings that up for me or uh, the Talos Principle are things that I bought because they were Linux compatible and because when I went into the Linux store or when I went into the Steam store like and when I was shopping around on Steam I I clicked on the Linux tab because they they were developing games for Linux and uh, or 
Another one was uh, KR-17. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it's called. KR-17, some, the something saga. Uh, the Tyrion saga or something. That was another one. It's kind of like a... Some sort of a flash gamey sort of thing. One of my favorite games ever, I would have to say. It's very good for what it is. It's a very, very, very good game. Or the Talos Principle, you guys have seen. I've played for hours. And I've already beaten the game. Uh, which is why sometimes it seems like I know what I'm doing. Even though you're just now seeing it. Uh, because I've already... I played the game when I first, first got it, and it ran like crap on my computer, but I technically beat it, and it was good, but I suppose Linux gaming isn't bad, and it's on the rise because more and more people are using Linux, and of course Valve is spearheading the, uh, the production of games on Linux. As I said, Dota 2 runs on Linux now. Uh, a lot of the source games, if you want to play Counter-Strike, if you want to play Team Fortress 2, if you want to play, uh, oh yeah, pretty much any any and all portal, uh, that all runs on Linux. So I think Linux gaming is kind of on the rise. Um, and I think that it could definitely be improved. I prefer Mac over Linux for gaming. But then I would also prefer Windows, because Windows can run anything Mac can. But then again, on Windows, one thing that you have to keep in mind, and same thing on Linux, is there's a lot of games that are made by small developers for these platforms that are kind of... I don't want to say crap, because that's mean, but they're lower quality. They're not really worth your time, I guess is how I would put it. Because... They were just made to be cheap, they were made to be free, and that's that. Apple, I think, puts a lot more time into product checking before they distribute their games, or they distribute their software overall. I think Apple has a very good review process. Um, so if you're gaming on Linux, I would just say be careful. Careful what you spend your money on, because some of it... Some of the stuff that you spend your money on is garbage. Some of the stuff you spend your money on is gold. But just just do your research. So uh, I think that is where I'm going to end it, uh, at least for this this review, this cerebration. 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 I don't know what the word is. I, I Googled the word. I was the one who came up with the word. I was the one who found that and decided that was going to be the title, and I don't know how to freaking pronounce it. Anyway, I think that's where I'm going to end it for today. Uh, if you sat through the whole video, congratulations. You sat through me rambling about Linux for almost an hour. Um, but thank you very, very much for your views, and uh, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It does help me out a lot. And uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you, uh, hopefully some of the myths of Linux were kind of brought to light and at least hopefully you got I guess kind of a taste uh, from somebody who used Linux for probably a year and a half, two years as my main operating system I would guess. I, I would go for more of about a year six months to a year I guess when that was all I would use I don't know why I shot up so high sorry I overestimated there but Hopefully this cleared up some stuff. Hopefully you learned something if you were thinking about it. I I hope that you look into it seriously and again try it out in VirtualBox and try it for yourself because what I, what I say might not mean anything to you. You might try gaming in Linux and think it's the best thing ever. You might think that the free is in freedom is the best part about it. You might think it is perfect. So please I I suggest you try it i want you to download it in, in fact right now now that you've watched this download virtualbox and download a linux distribution i would suggest starting with ubuntu or a linux mint and just go for it just try it and uh anyways i will talk to you guys in the next video thank you very much for watching